All right, uh, welcome to another episode of the Critical Introverts Podcast. I'm your host, Senor Filth. I'm with a Benevolent Asshole, and again, we have a BZ Ink Toys. Uh, we didn't really get that much into last time, uh, just based on just how the conversation flowed of uh, just Splat Rabbit comics and uh, I, I, like the your intention behind it and what drove you to create the character and have the humor that it, it has. Uh, I guess if you want to just start, like, I guess, like, what influenced you to just make Splat Rabbit? Well, and, and I'll try to keep it brief. I'm, I'm trying to focus on not, like, you know, ranting as much in these podcast <laughs> situations and stuff, but we'll see. It's just in my nature. So Splat Rabbit... Um, really came across as the intersection between three things. Uh, the first being just, I've been drawing all my life. I've been wanting to have a comic series of my own since I was 12 years old. I, I believe it's just that thing that God put within me to do. So mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, create sort of my own icon. Number two, I think that um, conservatives um, need more art and they need more icons themselves. So comics mm -hmm. kind of exist at the uh, cross section where you're able to tell these narratives, you're able to write these stories and narratives and gags and everything like that and create new icons for people that can then transform and, and be yeah, yeah. in any medium you need it to. They're very diverse that way. So um, I wanted to create a new conservative icon of sorts, uh, whether or not it becomes an icon, that's completely up to the people and the will of God. But um, just my attempt to do it. The third reason, and it's a reason that I can't say yet, I'm waiting until I get a few more followers before I reveal <laughs> the final reason. But let's just say I have beef with an artist out there and um, my character, Splat Rabbit, stands in the face of everything him and people like him mm. try to make black art and um, just politically mm. relevant art. So... Uh, yeah, we stand at the intersection of that. We're going to push against that. But that's beef that will be revealed. We will be declaring war when the followers go up. We're real close to 2K, too. So it might be you can't uh, reveal the artist that you're... Yeah. I don't want to do it yet. I just feel like I don't, I'm not punching with enough power yet. I yeah. feel like when I get maybe around the 5K mark, maybe that's when I'll finally name drop. But for now, I, got, I want to keep it under wraps, keep my feet to the fire make comics, spread the word, yeah. and get out there. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a, man, there's there's an artist that I, I, I've, I've been following for a while, but he's gone so insanely left that I just sort of follow him just to, like, watch his descent into madness. Um, what's his name? Pinko Joe. Uh, have you ever heard of him? Pinko Joe, does he have a certain comic or character that I may know? I, he does sort of... Um, I mean, it's like a graphic, it's a graphic artist, um, made does graphic design, but he has a sort of vintage comic book style. And, but lately for the last like year or so, it's just been whatever the mainstream is like, you know, COVID people, yeah. Trump is bad. Russia is bad. I stand. It's like, you can see like him going further, further into his own ass just yeah. by following him it's it's great to watch i like, i still love his art but yeah the added sprinkle of like watching him just oh and he like you know what it, go ahead <laughs> i'm sorry i was like going to say you know what it is um i just started thinking about it right now it's the news is like junk food mm -hmm. because the news <laughs> is really good at marketing towards people and that's mm -hmm. why so many people are so brainwashed so like if you if you think about like when you go shopping like, and you look at these ads or you see these um, bottles, like how they advertise to you. You're like, oh, look at that bottle. It looks like it's healthy or that looks like it's good for you. Mm -hmm. And then, like, most people will just buy stuff just based off of the looks. Yeah. Just like the cover mm -hmm. and just say, oh, it, it says it's healthy, so I'm going to eat this. So I think a lot of people are doing the same thing with the news without actually taking the bottle and looking at the back and saying, mm -hmm. oh, what ingredients are in this bottle? Yeah. What, what's in What's in this food? <laughs> and I, I, I think that's what I thought happening. of a joke I there. Yeah. Ooh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Let's, let's just move on. I think, I think, that that's, what, I think that's what's <laughs> actually happening with a lot of people. And if you want to tell that joke, just just do it, man. Yeah, go ahead if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we're, are one of the ingredients for one of these negative products 100% juice? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Yeah, I do think there is a weird addiction to the news. Uh, like, before, everyone that knows me always knew that I kind of followed this stuff, but it was just something I followed amongst myself. And then when I noticed it, like, becoming trendy, I noticed that the people that were treating it, they were kind of being somewhat addicted to it. And, like, I, I hardly ever actually just watch the news. Like, I, I don't, I, I sort of, like, follow it through following how bad it is, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like potato chips. Like, when yeah. you start eating them, you're like, oh, yeah, this is really good, but it's actually bad for you. Yeah, like, I watch, like, long format interviews and shit like that. Like, I don't, you know, watch, like, the five-minute clip of, oh, today in the news, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I, I find that to be really uninteresting. I like people talking about a specific subject for, like, an hour or so, so, so I can absorb it. Uh, yeah. But... There is, some, like, maybe it's a social media thing, like, it's tied with people's just need to keep uh, getting that short burst of information rather than, like, completely taking the time to absorb it. Um, mm -hmm. and I, yeah, that, and, and it exists at the cross-section of, number one, needing to be shocking in order to get those high ratings, mm -hmm. but they also have to enforce the, the wills of the regime in charge so you have to come up with narratives that fit the regime's you know narratives but mm. at the same time you got to make it sensationalized so that the people yeah. will uh keep tuning in so yeah like i mentioned before uh i don't know whatever episode but like it's hard to make um like compromise be marketable because it's not it's not exciting you know like you're conservative i'm you know relatively left -leaning. not fucking whatever the left is now but we can have a chat, and it's not like we're a shouting match or some shit like that. It's like I I don't really like debates. I think they're kind of overrated. I like more same. Uh, uh, what's considered like a dialectic, like just people just trading ideas. But that's not prime time entertainment for the average person. They need like a, gr a fucking death match. You know what I mean? It's bloodshed. Yeah. But yeah. Only verbally. They need the Undertaker, you know, you know, choke slamming. Oh. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? it's, it's it's they've gotten to a point where instead of people asking questions, people are just receiving information. Yeah. So instead of asking the right. questions like like with, with the Ukraine thing, it's like they're not asking oh, what's going on. Like, why would Putin do this? Like, I'm not on anybody's side, really, like in mm -hmm. terms of what's going on over there. But people are just not asking the questions like what, how? Instead, they're just receiving the information. They say, like, "Okay, think this way. Support Ukraine. Well, why support just Ukraine? I am mm -hmm. anti-war, but I can we ask questions? And as, as soon as yeah. you ask questions, they make it seem like you're like in love with Putin or you're pro-war. No, it's like I'm just asking questions. I'm trying to figure things out. And like that's what um, I think with you, you men, like people are just afraid to exchange ideas. You don't have to necessarily. Uh oh what they're saying sometimes oh. yeah. by listening you can learn something uh can you repeat that last part you got a little cut off there on my oh. end yeah oh uh what i was saying is that you don't ah shit again you have it again it happened again <laughs> see i'm getting i'm getting censored yeah. yeah you don't necessarily have to agree with people with what they're saying but mm -hmm. like you say like there should be an exchange of ideas that way you get like a broader perspective of what's going on instead of just like, oh, okay, war is bad. This person, who didn't yeah. that? No, like let's get a perspective from different people and let's put it like, like, like a melting pot. Just put all those ideas in there and yeah. try to figure things out. There's nothing wrong with asking questions and people are just not asking the questions anymore. They're just <laughs> receiving, receiving, receiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And feeling and feeling and reacting to, to what, what, how they're feeling. What's weird too is that like, if I'm asking questions about a subject, that means that I'm interested in that topic. And it's like they kind of want to divert people's attention, like like their general interest in something, and just have you pick a side, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, well, that's kind of where it goes, right? Like, we kind of <laughs> touched on it. We kind of touched on it before we really got started. But, I mean, you, you have the left 
that is actively trying to subvert everything, you know, from the starting with the families, but then even outside of the family, they've subverted the government. They're subverting business. They're subverting education. They're subverting your churches. They're out here trying to make everything a certain way. And then you have the right that is super splintered right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the whole, a lot of people are cleaving back to a more traditional state of mind, a whole state of being. They're getting rapidly into God. They're wanting to start families young and have lots of kids. And Mm -hmm. they want to, there's almost like this LARP going on some people want to go back to the 1950s and some people want to go back to the middle ages some people want to go back to primal living yeah where it's just you eat mm-hmm. meat and berries in a cave by candlelight and that's <laughs> you know it's, it's kind of ridiculous but yeah. you know you, you it's not just a feeling that you guys are feeling this is literally how the world is working it's almost like they're trying to subjugate people you're either in the regime's narrative or you are outside of it there is no in between yeah. you cannot give the outsiders any sort of credence you have to be completely on the side of the regime in charge you have to mm-hmm. be completely on the, their terms or you're not anything you're not anything special and the minute that you start and we talked about this a little bit last time too that you begin to capitulate to their side and their needs you're kind of subverting your own thing because mm. you go from you know, you could either go their way and support all the stuff coming down the pipe, or you can doubt one thing and be a liability. So mm-hmm. they kick you off and say that you're more akin to them. And that's why so many people are being radicalized too, is because they were once centrist and they had the one conservative opinion on one thing. Mm-hmm. The left said, no, you can't have it. And so they end up going right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I... What's really interesting too is, um, I'm not, I mean, I, I may have touched on this before in another episode, but, uh, like, I don't understand. It's weird that the left doesn't understand how radicalized they're kind of becoming. But you, you just have to think of it in terms of, like, if whenever there's like that movie or something like that of, of someone becoming like a hardcore right wing neo Nazi, it's, it's someone that sort of like just listened to one opinion. And they just kept going further into that. And the left sort of is doing the same thing just with on a media basis. Like the media that they are so surrounded with is so one direction that like it's going to lead them and turn them into like a very it's going to turn them radicalized just by way of just listening to one side of the aisle. And because of because everything in media is so one sided. It's kind of like a lot of people are being radicalized, but they just don't realize it. Like it's under the, I think because they just think it's on television, it's neutral, but <laughs> it's, it's so fucking weird. <laughs> they think how, how could, how, they're saying this on the news. How, how yeah. could they pervert the news <laughs> so much that they cannot, Dave. There you go, Davis. Uh, hey, Dave. <laughs> Is the man? <laughs> oh, he's like, well, you trying to figure out the sound? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> wow, I lost my train of thought because I saw Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, we were talking about uh, just um, the radicalization of the general population. Right. So you go from. I'm trying Hi. to collect the thought Hi. here. I may run a little bit. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? How there? <laughs> See a new guest? <laughs> what is going on? Um, but yeah, you, I, I don't you, think his you have a, audio is working. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. You have a whole uh, narrative flow here, and <laughs> if you don't put everything into it then you're going to i i just i've lost my train of thought here like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's the mock- you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's the you. mockingbird media just repeating an idea over and over and over again that eventually people start to like believe that it's mm-hmm. like fact like the whole gay bill thing it's like there's no such thing as a gay bill and i actually went ahead and read the whole bill it's like yeah. nothing in the bill says do not say gay it's like there's nothing in there yeah, I it's have it. Giving, yeah, yeah, I have it uh, set up t- so we can. If you want, guys, want to read it sometime. Um, 
Yeah, like um, we can but, yeah, build up to that. Um, oh, yeah, we're, we're on the Splat Rabbit thing. <laughs> yeah, we're still, yeah. Uh, we're still on Splat Rabbit? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, are you, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with, like, the Pepe meme. Do you know that, that character, the Pepe? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is, is Splat Rabbit, like, your version of a Pepe kind of thing? <laughs> or? Not really. Um, I guess maybe when it comes to icon status, I, I, maybe in the back of my mind, I'd like to achieve some level of Pepe notoriety. Uh-huh. Like, I do low-key want Splat to end up on the ADL list. Like, that'd be yeah, pretty Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> not that I've said... I haven't even... Well, outside of this one joke here, I haven't really said anything about the, you know, the people that the ADL likes to protect against. Um, but outside of that, no, not really. I, I never saw myself as emulating Pepe, per se, yeah. as much as I was trying to emulate, uh, you know, your iconic characters, your Mickey Mouse, your Bugs Bunny, your yeah. Homer Simpsons, you know, like I said, giving the conservatives their icon and whatnot. I, I think I mean more like a Pepe, because I do love what, like, the Pepe meme kind of... It keeps working, but now it's echoing. Yeah. Well, it's almost, him? like, become, okay. like, its own sort of, like, um... <laughs> everybody kind of defines it in their own sort of way, because everybody just taking... It's become like an icon that people just kind of use it however they, they see fit. <laughs> so uh, that, that is just kind of fun to, to use. It, it just shows like how uh, like there's a sense of humor yeah. that the radical left just doesn't get. And the Pepe thing is just a great little... Uh, I don't know, you got like a mark of it's like approval. Getting under right? the skin, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Under the skin. <laughs> but it, it's just to <laughs> it's just to fuck with them. It's just to like yeah. mess with people. <laughs> but it's right. registers to them as you know, it's some neo Nazi stuff. But no, it's just yeah. it's just people messing yeah. around with, with the internet. Yeah. It literally is from a comic that has nothing to do with politics. Yeah, like, yeah. Period. <laughs> so it's, it's almost like the left created that, that that character. It's like they took the most innocuous character and just turned it into yeah. something. <laughs> racist right. and bizarre <laughs> well you see a lot of that in uh in uh particularly leftism and i say that as a person who was into nerd culture when i was more centrist and other things we we tend to put feelings and ideas onto characters that we want them you know to be mm-hmm. whether it, that's intentional or not like you know we could talk about Disney's recent movie, since that's the topic of today's uh, yeah. podcast here, um, you have the new Turning Red movie, and I saw on Twitter where people were like, oh, it's not gay enough, and I was like, wow, <laughs> first Turning Red wasn't gay No, first yeah. Brave wasn't gay enough. We thought that they, they thought that they were, that Merida was going to be a big stand-in for being a lesbian or whatever. It didn't happen, so they were mad about that. Then Luca came out, and Luca turned out to be just a really good, clean kids movie mm-hmm. about two boys having a completely platonic friendship trying to get their Vespa in. <laughs> but they're also sea monsters, you know? Yeah. But they wanted that to be gay so bad. I had to block so many artists on Instagram because it was just Luca and um, Alberto Scorfano, you know, making mm-hmm. out and stuff. I'm like, bro, first of all, children. You're sexualizing children. Mm-hmm. Number two, not everything's got to be gay. And then Turning Red comes out, it's the same thing. And it's like, are y'all not going to be satisfied until, well, you know? Well, what's what's like, interesting... That stuff already existed, though. Like, there's like those kind of movies for like the Little Mermaid, like long before all all this stuff was happening. Like, mm-hmm. people had these weird fetishes, but now the thing is mm-hmm. that they're pushing it into the mainstream. Yeah, like it shouldn't be mainstream. You should just like, if you want to do those <laughs> those things, like just there's there's that dark corner that in the <laughs> on yeah. the web. If you want, if that's what <laughs> your thing. But <laughs> it's like, don't bring it to the children, man. I'm like, the children are. Uh, innocent is there any well, interest their, their innocence is why oh i'm so sorry uh, just, uh, is there um, any instances of like actual you know kids complaining about this or just like ideal exactly adults? exactly it's literally <laughs> just the, literally just the teenagers and, and especially the young college age adults complaining about it so weird yeah cause... it's never like a little kid's like oh i want to see more little gay yeah characters, more gay characters like no it's always about it's always about the adults the adults are just like these selfish is uh, narcissists that are always just make it about themselves. So they yeah. don't care about the kids. It's just like, it's all about themselves. Yeah, because I mean, when I was a kid, I just liked things that were fun and I didn't want like, I didn't get pissed that Lion King had like a fat Mexican kid on the fucking thing. I just, it was just a good movie. I didn't give a fuck. But, 
Oh, someone else on? Lion King got a fat Mexican kid? No, I'm saying if they did, like, I wouldn't, like, get offended oh. that they didn't have that, because, you know what I mean? Hypothetical oh, like, shit. That Lion King? I remember there maybe being a fat Mexican kid in Ice Age. But... Yeah, like, I didn't have, like, any, I wasn't offended by, like, Speedy Gon- Gonzalez. Yeah, he was hilarious was, back was, in the day. I was, like, that guy was the bomb, man. Yeah. That was, that was... Somebody had to tell I me want... that the crows from Dumbo were racist. Like <laughs> that never registered in my mind that that was a yeah. thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Are, are we talking about racist icons? Like right when I walk in? Uh, I don't even know how this kind of came about, really. But we have been scattershot this entire evening. Yeah. Like we are losing <laughs> trains of thoughts and talking in circles, but we're saying the right stuff, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Um, actually, can I can I tickle you pink with one thing? I was commissioned, actually. All right. Uh, so a guy, he sells shirts, especially what by artists he believes is good, so yay me, and asked me and commissioned me to draw Speedy Gonzalez and Pepe Le Pew behind bars with people raising signs saying free Pepe, free Speedy, and that is my <laughs> next commission. Sounds good. Hey, that's pretty great. That's fine. Uh-huh. I like that. <laughs> Gotta see how that one turns out for sure. I thought I was going to go somewhere else. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't even know where that Don't would go. Don't drop the Don't drop the snow. Yeah. Don't drop the yeah. Snow. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking some American me kind of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, well, that's good. <laughs> um, oh, God. I guess, I mean, we're, while we're on the topic of Disney, let's kind of, like, get into this whole Disney annoyance um, with this walkout shit. Um, apparently, they're pissed about the Florida bill, uh, which is really bizarre because I don't even know where they to start. They don't have any kids, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really oh care anymore, man. Mm-hmm. Hey. It's- Actually, really, really, I have a whole lot to say about that one. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, if you want to. Okay, like, the arguments they are making make no sense because it's, it's like they're Hold making on. a problem. Hold on one second. Hold on. Uh, Dave? What's up, Dave? Can you hear me? Uh, kind of. Yeah, like when you get close to the, um, your, your phone, uh, uh, we can kind of hear you. Oh, we're- all right i guess uh i just go on it have i (laughs) (laughs) um great train of thought come back uh train of thought let's go i know okay so um it they are basically making a problem out of thin air yeah The, the the freaking bill simply says you cannot teach um, sexual identity crap to kids who are too young to learn about sexual identity crap. Uh, and they are fucking acting like they are saying, you're not allowed to say gay! You're not allowed to be... <laughs> oh my god. It's just like, that's not what it freaking says! Let me, uh... Oh. Let me try to... I have the thing opened up, I think. Hold on a second. Ah, oh, crap. Where are you? <sighs> Yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is number three. That'll be number three, the thing that everyone's kind of bitching about. It's a classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not uh, may not occur in kindergarten through th- grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developably appropriate for students in accordance with state uh, standards. That's, no, that's, the horror. That's really the it. <laughs> well, what's creepy it's a, it's is that long overdue is what it is. Yeah, well, what was creepy is that they're trying to withhold uh, specific information of like what they were mm-hmm. teaching their kids. So, like, if you read the bill, it says like, oh, well, like you're gonna have to, like if you're gonna whatever it is that you talk about, like you have to like be transparent with the parent. Yeah, and you can't talk about sexual identity or sexual orientation. And yeah. what's the problem with that? It's like the, the parents should have, should know what their kids are learning, especially kids from kindergarten to third grade. Mm-hmm. I don't see the problem. I think it's more of a problem of them uh, making, it, making it about themselves because most of the people that have a problem, I'm sorry, but 
are gay and most of them don't have any kids. So mm. what is the problem that you have? It's like, those are not your kids. Those are <laughs> it's like, are you that trying to convert the parents <laughs> showing ownership? The yeah, it's like parents showing parents ownership to actual parents. They're basically trying to make yeah. it okay. <laughs> yeah, parents should have ownership over the kids over like somebody else that doesn't even want to have kids. Yeah, yeah. After it's years like, of gaining okay. ground, years of gaining ground, uh, you know, just doing little things over and over again, sexual revolution, then you begin to teach kids more about uh, evolution, begin to push God out, everything else. You basically have had years of parents giving away their consciousness, mm -hmm. their actual parenthood mm -hmm. over to these systems. So now yeah. screens mm -hmm. are raising kids, the teachers are raising kids, the after school programs are raising kids, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you have this village mentality where it's like, oh, all these people have a responsibility to teach kids this. And mm -hmm. now the regime is like, here, we need kids to learn this. So they are pumping it to all these auxiliary things because the parents have no um, control, but it's gotten so extreme that the parents mm -hmm. are finally fighting back. Yeah. And that's why you have so many finally. people going to these school board meetings and speaking on it, saying, no, we're not going to have this. They're returning to God. They're saying what needs to be said. And now you have this bill. And now that there is something concrete in the law beyond, you know, because let's face it, not everybody is going to want to follow the Bible. Not everyone is going to want to, you know, go on old traditional context. So they have to write it into law now in order for these people to acknowledge it. But even then, they still don't want to acknowledge it because they want to get them as young as possible. Mm -hmm. Because the LGBT community can't reproduce. They simply recruit. Mm -hmm. mm. That's actually a really good point. Um, and because with a, with a lack with a lack of the two products needed to create a child, I mean, you you make you get them as young as possible, and they'll even start thinking about sex being normal at five years old. And you're not even supposed to know what sex is. Mm -hmm. Even well, at that age. Well, right. we need the, these kind of bills like in every state because if we don't God have these kind of, we, we don't have these kind of bills like everywhere, especially like California, then nah. it's like what kind of teacher? <laughs> You'll never see that. Yeah, what kind of? That's not going to be here. Have, yeah. That's the reason why we have so many of these like <laughs> I don't know what's the name. What kind of teachers are we going to attract to the schools if they can? teach whatever they want they, if they can speak about sexual orientation and identity to yeah. these kids it's what kind the of teachers are we ones. gonna have that's what you're because gonna they get because they don't they don't have to tell a teacher they don't have to tell their parents like what they're talking about they can say anything they can groom them they can that's that's it's a big problem yeah it is yeah. really weird like basically I, I... grooming for pedophilia yeah and I mean... now it's they in fact, like, pedophilia has been rampant, like, behind Hollywood doors. And now that it's so bad morally in the U.S., they're basically just, like, flaunting it in the classroom. Hmm. Yeah. Well, like, what does a groomer say, like, to, like, a little kid that's, like, grooming? It's like, okay, we're going to talk about this and da 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 But don't tell your mom yeah. and dad. It's the same thing. But, like, you're actually exercising the law against the parents. You're taking <clears throat> away their will to, like, to raise their kids and... To protect them that's like that's really messed up yeah <laughs> it's like, it's messed up because <laughs> yeah, it's messed up because i like i i have you know people that work in public schools and I, I like they're somewhat naive about like the criticisms but like i can't find the best way to explain to them that like public schools actually do very much deserve the criticism that people are giving it because I don't know, be shut down. It, like I agree. you're doing something that is really just messed up, and that is like undermining parents. <laughs> you know what I mean? As a number one basically, thing you're doing. And now we're allowing that. It's basically allowing the government to raise your children by yeah. sending them to public schools. And right. now that the government is as twisted as it has become, I mean, I mean, what the heck is our is? No, 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 no. I refuse to call him president. Um. Is that former monkey? vice president? <laughs> huh? Former yeah, vice former president. Vi former <laughs> vice president, right? Obama. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a, he's basically a trained monkey, is what he is. Um, but if if someone as twisted as that is allowed to be on the president's seat, 
that is going to be infiltrated in our kids' minds. They're just yeah. going to be trained as much as puppets as that guy is. Isn't the uh, the new, um, uh, what do you call it, Supreme Supreme Court uh, person, like a CRT? Um... She, she she's soft on sex crimes is what she is. Okay. She's let a lot of pedophiles On child go. pornography, specifically. She's mm -hmm. very soft on child porno mm -hmm. pornography cases. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. See, I, I can't oh, even, like, oh, get, like, I can't even have a reaction like that, and that's so sad, because, like, I wish I could be have that genuine reaction. I, I mean, like, I mean, they're, oh, like, they're, look what's going on. <laughs> they're complaining to us for complaining about her after the crap they pulled on Kavanaugh. Yeah. Holy cow! How hypocritical can they be? Well, that's, that, that's the thing. Don't question. Look, 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 let me stop you right there. Do not question hypocrisy with these leftists. They don't operate in the frame of reason. You cannot bring up the hypocrisy because their hypocrisy allows them to keep smashing in the door and keep seeding ground. While we're over here using our facts and logic to talk about the hypocrisy and how the science is on our side, they are steamrolling us every single day. Mm -hmm. We, as more conservative thinkers, I'm not going to say we're all hardline conservatives, but we as more conservative thinkers have to just create the emotional arguments mm -hmm. off of the facts and logic that are on our side and we have to just be belligerent like mm -hmm. in Splat Rabbit I like to just clown pro-choicers now I don't even like to entertain their arguments or I find <laughs> the lowest of the low opinions to broadcast to the people because truly when you break it down abortion is an issue of not wanting to submit to Christ not wanting to submit to your spouses, not wanting to use sex and marriage in its proper context. If we did these things, we wouldn't even have a need for abortion because people would be having kids in the proper context. But because people are so promiscuous, they go off. So instead of trying to come up with a comic that is insightful and wise and to a T and tell the pro-choicers why they have made an unfortunate mistake, no, I just call them fucking retarded and we slam them, you know? Like, we, we don't have to be... Uh, uh, we don't have to have tact when dealing with certain things. No, so, because uh, they, they won't. They will just use it against you. They, they will, won't care. They won't care. They don't care exactly. I, I, so I, I like, guess you know what fighting fire with fire kind of thing. I guess. Uh, I, I guess have some objection to that. Um, don't you think? Um, how would I put this? I guess like for the subject of abortion, for me, um, I just look at it as. Something that the left got too comfortable with, um, like the mocking side of it, and so therefore, like their arguments have gone so bad that all that's left is just the nutty fucking celebrate your abortion shit. Correct. Do you think that, like, your approach of like just making fun of it, like, will down the line have the same kind of uh, effect with pro life arguments? Like, it'll just, it'll just boil it down to just being a stupid, you know, kind of insult and like the actual, like, what do you call it? The good fundamental argument of it will get lost uh, over time. I see what you're, I if definitely that makes see what sense. you're saying. I'm not sure if that makes no, sense. No, 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 yeah. no, I, I see what you're saying and that's a valid concern because mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, it has, the reason why the, the opinions have gotten so retarded is because they feel so comfortable mm -hmm. um, just being belligerent because it's worked for so long because conservatives are cowards. Mm -hmm. um i think the only thing that'll be different is the fact that you know we have the bible on our side we have the facts and logic on our side and i think as long as we don't lose sight of that facts and logic we'll be okay because we we can we can actually look into the practical science we can look into years of history we can compare the scriptures we can look at um different things mm -hmm. to be able to actuate our a lot of our opinions mm. Being First able thing. to couple that logic with the um, with the kind of more kiddish, you know, straight line, hard line marches and straight yeah. line, hard line, you know, taunting, I think makes us even stronger. Mm -hmm. As long as we don't lose sight of the facts and logic or the historical precedent first. Remember that, but still be belligerent. I think losing mm -hmm. the, uh, the smarts behind is what allows you to devolve. Like there was one point when liberals were decent people who had like you know tact and taste with you know a lot of their arguments, but now, not so much. Yeah, because uh, like like I said, I think that that's 
uh for me like my issue with the left it just i think they just got comfortable with the you know the slam dunk uh you know whatever john stewart said last week kind of arguments and in doing that they sort of like made their arguments just bad and like now they're just sort of lost and there's no uh you know consistent uh uh, no like no consistent principles or anything like that it's just mm-hmm. whatever the right says be the opposite because that's <laughs> what we do and like there's no middle ground like that's where like the middle ground just gets disappeared and i think that the way that they get their power too is that yeah they're not consistent in what they're saying they don't have values or principles mm-hmm is um, they're always on the attack. So it's like an Alinsky tactic where just Mm -hmm. attack, 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 and they're just waiting for the right opportunity to throw you off balance Mm -hmm. or you react a certain way and you say the wrong thing or you say something and they'll just take that clip. And that's what they would try to do with Trump. I don't think they were that successful. But uh, (laughs) yeah, they they just insult you to the point where they try and get you off balance. And then that's when they come in, they capitalize and they – inflate that they, they isolate that incident and they just like um hmm. blow it up right yeah I mean, do you guys that kind think... of speaks to oh go ahead go ahead my bad um that kind of speaks to the moral relativism of it all too um how you know the left side not everybody of course but um a, a lot of it tends to be atheistic and so you your morality is based on kind of the social mores of the day a lot of the times mm-hmm. and so Rather than, you know, actually looking at the president or looking at anything going on, you operate strictly out of the framework of what is going on in your environment right then and there. And then you know your principles, you know your guidelines that you've either invented or siphoned off to someone else or et cetera, whatever the case may be. And so when the whole world is is mostly lefty and they are able to make these belligerent arguments and everything like that, that is what continues to go forth in their society, whereas with us it's a return back to a more traditional mindset and so we begin to look back into the past and so we see this many years of that working and so that's what we go off of Mm -hmm. rather than what's going on today and and i think that's what's kept a lot of our arguments and stuff kind of you know based and regular but um like you said i I could totally see where losing that and and, you know if we keep going in direction we're going we'll eventually start doing what you what you were talking about Mm -hmm. there too with that we just started being belligerent and didn't look at the historical president. I guess, I mean, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but like how, like, do you know who a uh, young Ripa is? The mutator? Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, he's kind of known for like the idea of like going for the culture and like going into entertainment and stuff like that. Um, how, the, like, I get what he's saying. I, I guess like how, how would we do that? Like, how would we delve into the culture, but still, like, inherent, like, our values? Like, I'm a free speech guy to the heart, but as far as me making political art, I don't really have any drive to do that because it's not my style. Like, I like graphic design. I like, you know, weird kooky shit. Um, but, like, I wouldn't know how to like instill my values in my art because it's I, I like keeping it separate but i don't know maybe I, I have no idea where i'm going with this but i guess for you I, I I get... like how would you see yourself like instilling your values in your work or whatever message but not have it be so um like a cartoon version of ben shapiro or something like that like still have it be fun and engaging but yeah you know, it, it doesn't have a message of like fucking like gender identity or something like that, you know. <laughs> well, I think the way to do it would be like with anything else, you know, you your your mission should be to create something that's good and quality over anything. I think that's the thing that unites all artists is that mm-hmm. you want to make the best possible thing that you can make. Yeah. So that comes with experience. You have to do a little bit of experimentation. You have to find out what you like, you know, where, where who your inspirations are. You got to practice and you got to kind of start forming your own voice, you know, writing your own stories, drawing your own characters and, you know, getting good at doing that. You, you know, with, and with anything, you know, if you wanted to make political pieces, 
you'd then have to learn, you know, social media algorithms. You'd then have to learn uh, what hashtags to hit, et cetera, et cetera. With, there's a learning curve with everything. Yeah. And then from there, that's where the artistry begins. You know, after you've kind of gotten the basic skills, then you can begin to really flex your artistry. Mm -hmm. And so then you begin to create things that align with your values. And, and that looks a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. Some people work best in allegory where it's well hidden, where they can... Well, maybe not always well hidden. It could be on the nose, uh, <laughs> yeah. a la Animal Farm or something like that. But yeah. um, then you can have other things that speak directly to the issues, but they do it more creatively. The first thing that comes to mind, especially for my cause, is uh, late later episodes of Veggie Tales. You know, because earlier on they were quite ham fisted. I went back and watched <laughs> a lot of them again, yeah. and they were very ham fisted. That first episode is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to call it atrocious because it's super nostalgic to me and I love it. But like, where's God when I'm scared is like the most like sermon that Veggie Tales ever was. Whereas you go to a later episode like Lord of the Beans or something like that. The the writing is actually quite clever and the animation, you know, they've gotten enough budget to this point where the animation is like actually really good. And so you start off and you get better and you just try to make the best product that you can that goes against, you know, to, I don't know. For me, it just seems kind of, you know, simple. You just go and you just kind of do it, you know, yeah. and, uh, and a lot, with many things that that's pretty much how it goes. But um, I realize that it's not quite open and shut as I guess I'd like to see it in my head because what that looks like is going to be different for many people. You have yeah. Some, yeah, you know, artists do different things. So I guess it's find your thing, be good at it. And then try to find a way to leave your values into it. Yeah. That looks different for different people. I can't make a long dissertation video like John Doyle or something like that, but I could whip up a few Splat Rabbit comics that could, you know, teach the same points, but do it with more cartoonish elements. And maybe John can draw. I don't know. But all I know is that I'm the one making Splat Rabbit and he's the one making the videos. So yeah. it's like, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um, Cause it, it is something that I do think about, like whenever I create, but like I, I just want to be so far removed from making, like you know, the Black Power Fist art and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I just think it's just so douchey and lame, and I want to be like, so always, out of that. <laughs> I always wanted to bring up that one uh, picture of that that one artist. Uh, he did it like with good intention, but it's so funny because like I don't know if it's like how obvious it is, but like he had like one of those um one of those those um stylus pens mm -hmm. and he drew this huge stylus pen and then like three fists like holding it and it's supposed to be like a, a program where it's like oh uh we'll t we work in the animation and like we're gonna volunteer to teach people of color oh. animation and so he created that logo and it's like you're super cringy because it's like three it's like three fist holding yeah, yeah, yeah. his big style i think i think so he's it like it's like Maybe, triple yeah. fisting what, what the hell's going on oh, dear. <laughs> it's, 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 i don't yeah. know it's just to me i just look at it it's like it's so oh, no. <laughs> and they're all like different like different shades of color too it's like that everything oh, everything on. about that should have run some alarm bell yeah did I you gotta get, bring it up like sometime, but like, did you guys? Just, just... Did you guys hear that recent story about um, fuck? There's like some woman's organization, I think, in Australia that they had to change the logo, uh, because it literally looked like a penis. Like it was like the W was like a curved thing. Yes! You saw that, right? <laughs> God. I don't think I saw that one. I gotta find it somewhere. Yes, I did. It's hilarious, but it's like, to be honest, I everything y'all are mentioning is one of my big fears with, mean... with making comics is that I I would hate to make something that in my heart rang so true, uh -huh. but the rest of the world is just like, dog, oh, that sucks. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, remember, well, like, I remember one time when I was the, working it. The worst it, thing I've ever was... done was something like that. I saw this one girl one time, like at uh, when I was working at SeaWorld, where she was drawing live, and it's so funny because it was when uh, that one ride, the is it Atlantis or the roller coaster, uh -huh. ride, uh, just opened up, and she was drawing, and then she so she did the the roller coaster, and then there's uh, these like three pillars, and then, <laughs> and then like she colors them like uh, flesh colors, so they look wrong already because they kind of look like yeah, kind of phallic. 
<laughs> and then she's like, oh, uh, she's, so she's like panicking. And she's like trying to fix it. So she draws like a little line. It just makes it like it separates it into it looks more like a mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, oh, no, no, no. And then she starts like drawing draw a little water. I was like, what are you doing? Are you doing that on purpose or what? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if she did that on purpose no. or what, but it was—it was, it was, yeah. was like so funny to watch that live in person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go by, go by. Oh, no. oh, that is a, That's so embarrassing. <laughs> um, I, oh, what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Oh, it was—it wasn't. It—it it wasn't really anything interesting. Like the worst I've ever gotten with one of my drawings is that I ended up making a girl's nose look like Pinocchio, and that's mainly because the way I drew her hand was like yeah. popping on the side of her face yeah. and unfortunately i drew them the same color so she looked like she had a pinocchio nose oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now it's like now i can't look at that drawing the same yeah so thankfully i my my mistakes were more innocent <laughs> good um I guess just real quick, let's like go over the Disney demands because oh yeah yeah for the walkout. Uh, uh -oh. The hell is this? Okay, Disney's demanding what? Uh, the Disney the, workers, about the employees, right? Yeah, the employees that uh, left uh, here. Here it is, Newsweek. The Newsweek article. Uh, let's see. We uh, demand you make those thirteen-year-old girls from turning red make out. And finger each other on cam. Number oh. number five. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play that? Or who played that? No, that was him. That was him. That number was number five is the weirdest one. But, uh, okay, let's see. The first one is pretty straightforward. Uh, must Disney Walt Disney Company must immediately indefin indef indefinitely cease all campaign donations to these politicians politicians involved in the creation or passage of the don't say gay or trans bill it's when did it become what? can you read that one more time just to make yeah. sure i i because I, I can't see it on screen but just one more uh, time to make sure i got that right the walt disney company must in immediately and indefinitely cease all campaign donations to these politicians involved in the creation or passage of the don't say gay or trans bill. Okay. Uh, let's see, number two. Uh, Walt Disney must publicly, uh, public, publicly commit to an actionable plan that protects employees from hateful legislation. I don't know how the hell they were supposed to do that. Like, are there are there are there pre K through third grade kids at the Disney Plex that you're just itching to teach about homosexuality and trans rights and shit? I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, like, there's the question. There's the question. Yeah. I don't like, know. what what does that even mean? Anyway, continue. Oh my god. Um, let's see the the company. <laughs> The company must reaffirm the company's commitment to protecting and advocating for its LGBTQIA+. Jesus, what the hell is IA? Anyways, staff. The alphabet mafia. Even in the face of a political risk. It was, wow. So, basically, what? stop sending what? our movies what? censored what? to China. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Let's see the fourth one. The fifth one is the most interesting one, but let's go with the first one. Uh, the employees must de the employees demand that Walt Disney Company take responsibility for its inaction to protect the rights of LGBTQIA plus children and their families by making substantial contributions to the Trevor Project, trans life, and other human rights advocacy groups. In an effort to regain our trust in the company's inclusion and equal equality efforts. Damn it. So But this has why? nothing to do with Disney. I don't yeah. zero. Like it was Disney sitting there like in the governor's office, like yeah, yeah, sign it, it's yeah. sign it. Like I don't I don't understand why they're even having these. Yeah, it doesn't have anything demands. to do with this. I, I, one thing I've I've always it's like a weird I pet mean, peeve. Why on earth is it about school? 
this is this is why I have shunned art, um, or you know the kind of animation and graphic side of things specifically, but as a whole kind of art academia and the art industry, mm-hmm. the animation industry, because I I wouldn't have stood a chance there. Yeah. Um, no, number one, first and foremost, I mean, I just don't have the skills, but that's a whole other beef I have with it. Like, I just don't care enough to learn yeah. the muscular structure of every creature I set my mind to draw. <laughs> but outside of that, you know, you then have the moral objections. I just wouldn't survive. Like, this is what an eternal memo amongst Disney employees. Y'all came up with the silliness. What if I was working at Disney right now? What would I look like? Would I? I I'd refuse this crap going on. Am I going to get demonized and blacklisted in the industry because I wasn't a part of the walkout? Yeah. Would yeah, my you views would have to conform? Would my views I, have to conform and walk out with this company and my there. colleagues? Like, oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, uh, did Did any guys take animation when you were in school or anything like that? Yeah, I, I, I took some. For it. I took I more took like film, uh, course. three three uh, D animation. Because when I was going in, like, I noticed that, like, the SJW shit was kind of creeping into that. Like, a lot of the students, like, the ones that are more hardcore into animation were pretty hardcore SJWs. And, like, mm. they would put their shit into their cartoons. And it's like they wouldn't well, realize. Like I, I yeah, I don't like know, like, if that's, like, what the teachers did. Like, if Actually, the teachers kind of groomed not- those or kind of, like, put those students into, like, Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I've, I've noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's weird. Yeah, I think that's what we talked about with all left, well, all arts being like lefty dominated. You know. Oh, go ahead. Go, uh, uh, school. go ahead, Evan. Yeah. Evan. Sorry, it's just that like you, you guys already. I'm going. I'm going. Uh, you guys already know like all the crap I had to listen to when I was going to my art school in mm-hmm. Austin. Um. Like, and yeah, what Austin. you just said, like, they had, they put a lot of their, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, ooh, ooh. Senior Phil knows all about it. Um, but the one of the most interesting, uh, I guess, homework assignments someone had mm-hmm. given was that he and this other girl were making up superheroes that were all LGBTQ characters and there was no in between. Yeah. And it was basically like taking down the patriarch conservative whatever enemy they made up, made up in their mind. And I'm just sitting there listening to this and I'm like, yeah. are they serious? Yeah. And now, now where we are now. <laughs> yeah. Where we are now, uh, oh yes, now I know they were serious. Yeah, and now they're in like Cartoon Network making cartoons. Apparently there's also an animation on on Netflix that also kind of embodies this, where it's about three girls and it's the first boy that walked up to one of them who was blonde and pale and handsome, approached one of them to help one, and this girl just screams, oh stop, you with your... Uh, this gender creepy, whatever the crap it is, but whatever, this is a freaking animation in Netflix. Yeah. Well, what it is too, it's kind of like, um, can you, I guess, can you call it? I don't want to call it control op- opposition, but uh, like Disney has like a bad, like bad reputation. If I mean, they don't have like the most beautiful reputation in terms of like, uh, of like child grooming and all that. Uh, yeah, I'll just say pedophilia. So it's yeah. like. This to me seems more like theater, kind of to act like, oh yeah, like we're 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 um we're this way, we're more conservative, we're funding like the uh the, the acting like they don't really care about LGBT, but that's what they're eventually gonna cave in to mm-hmm. these demands. Yeah, they're gonna act like they don't care. So this is all theater. They're gonna be, oh yeah, we we don't we're not gonna like succumb to your demands. They're gonna pretend like there's like a fight, like there's like a story. There's no story there. It's all like a narrative where eventually they're just going to, oh, yeah, you want this? You want a movie with two guys kissing? Okay, we'll give it to you. Oh, what else yeah. do you want? You want this? And they're just going to push all that stuff in there. Like, they're just trying to create, like, there's, like, some kind of resistance and battle there. But it's all yeah. it's all there. Well, it's I all, think, it's all, <laughs> they're doing it. I think, and, and I agree with you, but I, I think it's it's almost like we what we talked about earlier with the news. 
how they have to keep it on the narrative, but they also have to keep people's attention. In the case of Disney and other entertainment companies, instead of trying to get hits, you want to sell tickets. You want to sell movie tickets. You want to get butts and seats. And so while they do want to subvert people, they want to get people to do more alphabet mafia moves. (laughs) <laughs> they can't fully go in that direction because really in reality, and I think a lot of people lose sight of this, being gay is like a small, small percentage of the population, much less uh, trans and, and yeah. map and everything else that they got going on or trying to get going on. And so if you, if they were to do a full on gay thing, people wouldn't show up. A lot of people really don't play that crap. And so they have to kind of toe this line where, they kind of casually mention it. A character mm-hmm. kisses in the background. Uh, the, what comes to mind for me is the scene from Frozen where the uh, guy at the picks up a blowout, where he looks back into the sauna and like that whole family's back there, but there was no woman and there was just another grown man. And they mm-hmm. confirmed that that character was gay and that was his husband and their kids in the sauna. And so they do it that way because boom, hey, mm-hmm. look, hey, hey, gay, gay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's so like it's like product like so placement. Yeah, it would, yeah. yeah so uh, it, I, I agree not, with you. Yeah, yeah. In, okay. in terms of like they they're making it seem like that's what people want. That's not what the majority of people want, but they're making it seem like that's what people want with these uh, demands. And right. hopefully, yeah, that won't. I don't think it's going to happen where they're just going to go full blown. But that's the way they get away with things that they're doing or that they're showing in the movies because like, Oh, well, these people protested. So we're just listening to the people. This is not Disney. This is the people speaking. Yeah. So this is how you they, know, they wash their hands from all that crap. Benevolent asshole is on it. That, <laughs> well, I mean, what else can you say? That's it. Actually, number five of these demands is just get, listen to this. This is, let's see what they're, let's see if you can guess what they're asking for. Uh, number five is the company is also being urged to allocate content spending and outline how it will expand its content uh, catalog to represent the LGBTQI. Uh, that's really hard to say, as well as transparent reporting on methods of community inclusion in content creation and inception. So, do you know what they're trying to what they're asking for there? Let me read it again. Let me see. The company is being yeah, one more time. Okay. <laughs> the company is being urged to allocate content spending mm-hmm. and outline how it will expand its content catalog to represent the LGBTQ plus as well as transport uh, transparent reporting on methods of community inclusion in content creation and inception. So pretty well, it sounds like they're just allocating more um, more of their budget for the LGBT community, like to incorporate that more into their. But also, the, they just want more, like, t- kind of more uh, mm-hmm. propaganda. That's what they're asking, kind of asking for. <laughs> well, that, well, that's what I was about to say. That almost doesn't even read like a an employee even wrote that. Yeah. That almost just straight yeah. up sounds like, <laughs> yeah, uh, like like what I, I don't want to take credit from benevolent asshole because he broke it down just then. Um, but it's kind of like what he said there, where they're controlled opposition and they're just kind of putting up a farce. Like they wrote that in there, and they were like, "Um, yeah." And the Disney company will basically make a whole bunch of more gay movies and will tell people about efforts that they are doing to uh, hire and uh, employ more gay people. That basically just sounds like they're opening to to expand on this even more. That doesn't even read like an employee demand. What employee? Yeah. What employee really cares about that kind of thing yeah. when they work yeah. for these companies anyway let alone yeah. for them to disclose all that and to put mm-hmm. more to it like nah that's if you can't tell that this is just a phony document submitted by an, an evil corporation that's got their hand on a lot of the filth that's being proliferated through society i got bad news for you kid i don't know man uh i think like this is because i've read a, a couple of these kind of demands uh it's just something to kind of like to do and make fun of um but they're all kind of worded the same and they have like a terrorist kind of like do this we want money for this so i do i do think that this is legit from like 
I don't think it's from the like the bulk of the animators. I think it's probably just like a few that are like the most vocal, and the most annoying, and everyone else is just like, uh, uh whatever. I, I want to get fired, so mm -hmm. kind of shit. Uh, I guess uh, let's just the last one. Uh, lastly, the group wants it's a. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, lastly, the group wants its employer to commit to creating an LGBTQA pl plus, damn, it's really hard to say, an LGBT whatever brand that focuses on LGBT creators and re underrepresented voices and cites the Onyx as a collective, as a collective, as an example. But yeah, they just, they want more, <laughs> more stuff out there that's pushing this shit. But it, it makes me wonder all the time, like, I... What happened? Uh, I just, well, I just... Oh, here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, was, I was just stunned, like... What? I've asked this before, <laughs> but, like, do you think the people that, like, the activists have any idea that they're coming off like this? Like, they're... How do I put this? Do you, do you think they know what they're doing, or are they just driven through... Rational, irrational thought and just probably not it depends it, it depends it depends on who wrote it and and how deep they are off in it because if, if i'm correct here in thinking that this sounds like just disney getting giving itself more permission to be more gay then it's very nefarious and it's very intentional but if this truly is a soul that is just so lost, some they, them, she, hers, but really is a him, his, that really feels that passionately about this kind of thing and is making these demands of a Walt Disney company, then maybe they are just so like programmed and so deranged that they don't care how they come off. The optics are, mm -hmm. are just gone and they're just like, push this yeah and either way it, it's a it's a bad bad look because yeah. i don't know how you even how you look at that and think that any good could come of any of this this it doesn't even you know it makes me nostalgic for 2010 to 2012 when when just being gay was a taboo thing yeah and that's all that they were advocating for because it has gone from being just a hey love is love kiddo you know, light taunting to being just all like feeling like a damn near assault. Like, yeah, is it is it really that pressing that you have to have a whole LGB alphabet mafia division in the Disney company? A la, it, it almost seems to me like you know Disney has their brands within it. Like Winnie the Pooh on its own sells more merch every year than Mickey Mouse himself actually really? than the mickey and friends brand yeah and it's like you look at the top 10 brands ever there's three of them are disney it's mickey mouse and friends winnie the pooh being the top one and then the disney princesses it almost reads as if they want to create a new strain mm -hmm. of disney that is like disney alphabet mafia with a whole pantheon of gay icons in disney yeah it's so weird i see this too as sort of if these demands go through, like, kind of like the end of Disney, because uh, lately I've been watching a lot of older cartoons, like on YouTube, like old, uh, like MGM kind of cartoons and like the golden age. And just, it was so refreshing to just watch something that was just made to just be entertaining. You know what I mean? Like, it was just a funny yeah. cartoon. It was just... Oh, like yeah. 10 minutes of just gags just, just make you laugh and that was it it wasn't some fucking message uh but i i i'm almost certain that that's just dead as far as mainstream um uh, maybe just cartoons because i don't i see entertainment uh just being like secondary you know now it's just spreading the message if i could offer something to that uh -huh. yeah um it's, i think about really last sad. week what it's we, absolutely sad uh, go ahead go yeah ahead. I, I think about what we were talking about last week how you kind of asked me um do you think that um atheists or agnostics are um 
missing something that Mm -hmm. you know authentic believers are missing Mm -hmm. and i think if i if i could offer any sort of insight from my christian perspective and and, you know as you said you're more of an agnostic uh type here i think that 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 may be the thing that you might be missing here because you know in our faith and by what i've witnessed it's an accelerationist mindset that they have because I think that they, a lot of these people work for Satan and they know that the time is short. And so rather than, you know, introduce it slowly, they feel like they have to go all the way full tilt into this Mm -hmm. and convince as many people as possible to go for this nonsense. And this shit is binding. Like this stuff will send people straight to hell. We're not talking about, you know, a little white lie every now and then. We're talking about sodomy. We're talking about perversion of children. We are talking about the breakdown of the family structure ordained by God from the beginning. Um, we're talking about some serious, like, sins here. And the more people accept this, the more people are going to be led astray and led straight to hell. And so I think that that may be, you know, from my perspective, that may be the spiritual thing that I'm seeing and that others may be seeing that maybe someone like you might not quite um, see. Yeah, you're wondering what, why why can't we just get back to old cartoons? And yeah. you know, I'm wondering the same thing. You know, why can't we just have old cartoons again? But then I remember, oh yeah, accelerationism. The time's short. Like Jesus, I've all, I've said it, and it might be even shorter at this point. But I say that the Earth doesn't have another twenty years. I think twenty years is the <laughs> highest that we have, to be honest. And so if, they have to do everything in their power to subvert everything. If I, if and I may interject, down. go ahead, Ed. Go ahead, Ed. If go I may interject, go for it. Um, yeah, if I can interject, um, absolutely agree 100% with what you're saying, Beezy. Um, another thing I need to add is that so mine and your morality, fully based on the Bible, we know right from wrong. Um, but like. Um, and uh, I guess I'm sorry, Senior Bill, but uh, people who are known as atheists or uh, agnostics, where does their morality come from? Mm-hmm. And so when you have a, you know, you, you, and so the morality that they come from, they basically have to use it by, use experience for what they've seen their parents do and their peers. Mm-hmm. And so entertainment for us, it's basically their best sermon pulpit. Mm. So by using uh, entertainment, which is you know just for us supposed to be all about all fun and games, it's their pul- it's their best pulpit because that's the best way to reach out to people through the entertainment industry. Yeah. So um, with the lack this of resume. morality uh, and uh, you know, yeah. But so from the lack of um, set morality uh they are basically using what they can what they've learned uh to brainwash what now, whether they know that they serve satan or not they that, that's basically it hmm. it's interesting because I, I was talking to someone not on this show but just through private messenger um like they're christian conservative and uh, I, I was talking to them about like one thing I've, I've noticed uh, talking to conservatives versus talking to more left-leaning people is that conservatives have a little bit more, uh, they feel more, they seem like they're more secure in where they're at, I guess, if that makes sense. And I guess because yeah. with Christians, they, they have a, like, they have the Bible, they have religion, they have something that gives them some kind of a consistent foundation of uh principles and morals and stuff like that and i'm not sure if it was the person i was talking to or me but one of us mentioned like that on the left they kind of get their morals from like television and fads and fads always change so like there's no consistent that's uh, another thing yeah. that's another thing yeah oh social mores yeah, like there's no consistent like this is good because Actually, of, someone's yeah. right. So yeah, it's kind of interesting you brought that up because 
I think that's why a lot of conservative people try to go to this idea of the 1950s. And that's kind of what they get stuck on. Mm-hmm. Because at that point, that was the aesthetic. Now, I think that it was a very commercial, like, like commercially pander type thing. Right, right idea. But, you know, the reason why they were pursuing it was off. It was a keeping up with the Joneses type mentality where everyone had to be, you know, have the wife at home. The wife needed to be cooking and cleaning and everything like that. Taking care of the house. Kids go to school. Dad goes to work. There's one family car, a nice, big, shiny, compact car that they could all fit in. You all crowd around the TV set after dinner together and you watch a program and blah, yeah. blah, blah. But, you know, that was kind of the social mores of the time, though. So even the person that wasn't religious or had the Bible to guide them or, or that sort of thing, they still kind of went along with it. Yeah. You know, I, I think about myself, how I, as a black man, you know, you've seen people say all kinds of things, both from the liberal and the conservative side. You know, the liberal side says that, oh, black people are oppressed or marginalized, whatever. And then you have certain conservatives that think that we're a bunch of uh, untamed beasts that will never be able to be <laughs> redeemed. <laughs> and it's, it's been a wild ride being straight up on the conservative circuit as a black man, let me tell you that. But, um, <laughs> but the point is that. I'm, I'm kind of a testament to the fact that if you have an environment, if your parents give enough of a fuck and raise you in an environment that will um, actually cultivate you and actually, like, you know, actually teach you something, mm-hmm. you'll pick up more and you'll have a different mindset when it comes to things. If you raise somebody in filth, they will have a filthy mindset. You raise somebody in cleanliness, they will have a cleanly mindset. So that's kind of like the whole thing with everything. That's why I want to create more conservative content, and it's why the employees at Disney are advocating for a whole Alphabet Mafia um, line of movies and toys and stuff for Disney yeah. because they know if they can push the culture further left and come under this umbrella, then they can get more people to say that it's okay. Yeah. And whether you're religious or not, you can see the negative impact of that mindset because then you get a bunch of crazy stuff in society and the normal person that otherwise wouldn't care will just naturally go along with it, thus binding themselves to this system, this regime. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, yeah, like the possibility true. of like, uh, uh, not Disney per se, because I think Disney's kind of fucked with this, but like, let's say if fucking Pepsi, the people at Pepsi start to do a walkout for similar reasons, like what would be the odds of any kind of big corporation just coming out and saying, like, yeah, we're not going to just go fuck yourselves. Anybody wants to protest, you're fired or some shit like that. Like, like a, a company with balls. I'm trying to just, I'm guessing I'm saying. I don't, I don't know what what company that would be. Certainly like not the Pepsi company. Yeah, uh, like if Levi's or some shit just came yeah, out probably. and said, oh, yeah. Oh, Levi's went full woke a, a while ago, too. I don't think Levi's would be the one to do it either. Really? Yeah. Yeah, if you'd be surprised at the companies that like have woke policies, like it'd be the quietest people. You know, you think Levi jeans, you think about cowboys and, and yeah. Chevrolet commercials, but nah, <laughs> it's 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 weird. But um, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just depend on the conviction of the people at the top. You know, of course, my pillow, Mike Lindell's not yeah. gonna answer the capitulate to these uh, demands. You I love that. Mike Lindell. <laughs> Michael we have a fan, yeah. But um, no, I don't think that Pepsi Cola is going to be the guy to do it. And and the one that does, I feel like it would just kind of be controlled opposition. Maybe they would say it that no, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, go along with this. Makes and you wonder. People... It makes you wonder because like if a company did that, I think they would get so much like thank God from like the general population. Like I think people are just generally tired of this kind of shit and they just want to drink their pepsi you know what i mean so it's weird on a business level that like businesses continue to cave in because i think it would get more support if they just said go fuck yourselves yeah, that, that, maybe that's just me but well because they don't serve the people they serve their own and, and again um i gotta kind of be careful here because it's it's two different we, we fundamentally kind of believe in a lot of the same things until it comes to the, the uh, spiritual aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way you look at you, either way you look at it, they're going to go with whatever the regime says so that they can maintain their power balance. But then if you add the spiritual element, 
they're going to do whatever Satan is dragging them out to do. So, yeah. either way, it's no good. Yvonne, are you being pulled over? No. Or somebody else is getting pulled over. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry. I, I'm actually in a traffic jam right now. So. Okay. <laughs> um, so, if anything, that was just a truck. <laughs> Hello, truck. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. You you should have gone to uh, D.C. with the rest of the truckers. Mm. Uh, damn. So, um, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to get into the Dave Rubin thing, but we're kind of running out of time, and I have to kind of start dinner and stuff like that soon. Um, hmm. Hey, man, this is gonna be the last podcast, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, part two or something. Yeah, I, I guess if uh, we can just hit touch on it another time, I'm getting kind of starting to get a little late. Um. Yeah, but if you want to get a rundown of the Dave Rubin situation, check out Splat Rabbit. We thought about. I guess. I guess. I guess with what little time uh, we have, uh, let's see how short we can keep this. Like, oh, what's your issue with the Dave Rubin thing? I, I'm just generally don't understand what the controversy is totally about. Well, it, it kind of plays um, back in. I love so, looking back. Um, I, mean, I know what's happening. Like he's gay and he's adopting right. two kids. Um, but I mean, what is the uh, con? What's the? I guess what's your issue with it? Uh... I guess my issue with it is that he's he's this conservative pundit, and you know, it's kind of the splintering of the conservative party. You have those mm-hmm. that just want to make sure the GDP is okay and and be able to carry goods, and it's all about freedom, blah blah blah. You're Con Inc., Boomer Con, Booby Con, Barstool Conservative, whatever you want to call it, they're very surface level conservatives versus the true authentic ones that are the ones that are trying to turn back and really actually strive for tradition and, you know, fight for something greater than themselves. And so when you have someone like Dave Rubin, who was, you know, gay, of course, the conservative establishment, the ones, the, the former of the category, are going to be like, okay, yeah, he's gay, but he believes in our principles and our values, so we're we're going to tolerate him. And and for me personally, you know, I didn't care about Dave Rubin being gay so much, but now that we're looking at these issues where kids are being threatened by these insidious agendas from the Alphabet Mafia, you then have Dave Rubin come out and, and, and try to raise kids, and it's like we we talked about with environment. You raise kids in that environment, you open yourself up to, you know, the possibility that somebody will go down this path and be a perpetuator perpetuator of this environment. So if, if these babies come out and they see Dave and Dave lording over them and, and loving on each other or whatever you want to call it, um, he may have the impression that that's something that he should he could strive for, too. And he may be more likely to keep it going. They can't reproduce, so they recruit. Um, same thing with a girl. Oh, maybe since daddy likes daddy, then I could be a mommy that likes mommy or something like that. And it sounds kind of stupid, but kids are stupid like that, you know? And so, so, so it, not it to, contradicts with... So not to cut you off, you I'm should sorry. have an issue with... Because, I mean, I don't really think Dave Rubin is a conservative. I think... I think for the most part, he's just someone that just advocates. I, I guess in the same way that we advocate for similar things, uh, like freedom, freedom of speech, that kind of stuff. Uh, probably, a, probably the best way to describe him was a classic liberal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because so, classic liberal is gay, um, kind of thing. Uh, but like, is the issue the fact that like the uh, the conservative brand is kind of latching on to him that is like the issue or I mean it, well, I mean it, like would you say like what I said about the would you say like Dave Rubin like do you watch his show or not really I, I've caught a few episodes early on mm-hmm. um again I I'm not going to say much about his lifestyle because ultimately <laughs> I'm I'm not the lord I'm not going to lord over people and tell you you can't do this <laughs> but at the same time I'm going to advocate that maybe you try something different yeah um and so, like, I, I caught a few of his episodes. I liked a few of his points. 
but on the whole, it was just kind of like, yeah, I, I've heard this said better by other people that are a little mm-hmm. bit more aligned with me at the end of yeah. the day. So it didn't matter. And, um, but I mean, but are, yeah, are, are you okay with, <clears throat> um, I guess when I see say, people like Dave Rubin, uh, there's someone that's just trying to find some kind of middle ground with the average person, which I think, I mean, can you agree that maybe that's a good thing or to an extent, um, Mm -hmm. to an extent, um, I think I, I, I've said this about pastors like Stephen Furtick who preached this very worldly message that doesn't challenge people. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been like, there's a place for people like him. Yeah. There's a lot of people that necessarily wouldn't come to Christ through the brand that I'm selling. They they may see it in Furtick, and they may announce Jesus as Lord, and they may try to clean up their life a little bit. And that's there's something to be said about that. However, if if the person never goes beyond Furtick, then they will remain in this infantile state and it won't be truly redeemed and their actions and their conduct doesn't help to advance the gospel and it certainly doesn't help to keep their house in order because they're still out partying and they're still out doing drinking drugging you know whatever they're doing having promiscuous sex because they're not being challenged they're not being edified by the word and what's going on in it Mm -hmm. similar thing with a dave rubin yeah they it might be a big tent where people will hear slightly more conservative opinion but if someone gets stuck on at Dave, as so many conservatives do, again, we have a whole like contingency of conservatives that don't go into the meat and potatoes of why you are conservative in the first place. They conserve nothing, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's kind of where, where Dave Rubin kind of is in the cross section. You're not conserving anything by being a gay parent. You know, you're not advancing a family. You're not, you know, you're not bringing forth more fruit. You're not going forth and multiplying. You're not... You know, you're not standing for the values that a person should stand for. You know, the men got to be strong. The men got to, you know, take on women. And, the, you know, and the women have to be able to build up the house and to raise the children and, and keep the man in check. But, you know, Bible even talks about that, like that if your husband strays a little bit, that you still may be edified, that you may be able to talk sense into him. You know, that it, all this is talked about in conservative circles in our Christian faith and whatever like that. But and yet so many people get stuck at these pundits that are very, that are softballing them, giving them the facts and the logic. And that's about it. You know, um, Uh, but but like something deeper to be explored there. I I guess for me, like, like I've mentioned before, it's like, uh, I think the the problem with the left is that it's (laughs) becoming so like, you have to believe in these things or you're not with this kind of shit. And it, it sort of sounds like, uh, that you're that's kind of that you're kind of uh, that the criticism against Abram is sort of similar but on the right side and uh, no I, I get that I, 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 do you get what I'm saying <laughs> we have not no I, I understand exactly what you're saying and I guess the only thing I can say about yeah, that and I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can get you to agree and again i'm not really here to like argue yeah, I'm not, that, this like, isn't me like, like trying to argue you know, with it or something right, i'm just no, no, i'm just trying to understand like what the conservative controversy with this because i still i don't understand it i i, I completely understand that yeah. and i and i see that the um and you're right it, it is like that but for me what we're fighting for is just all around more noble mm-hmm. is more acceptable it's actually something that even somebody who isn't expressly religious could agree that our method builds families and thus when we have strong families we have strong communities Mm -hmm. and we have men that'll actually be able to stand up against things like people talk about the don't say gay bill and everything like that i mean you're you if you're a fan of dave rubin and you're supporting everything he does you might hear something that these disney employees would would say and you might be like oh well i guess that that makes a little sense i mean i, I wouldn't want, want my old your buddy dave or his kids to be in friendship blah, blah 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 and then boom these people that would be able to listen to reason are suddenly turned away from the idea because that's too radical that's too much yeah. um and so you know, it, it kind of just is what it is in that situation, you know. Uh, it, maybe it is all or nothing for the brand of conservative that I'm pushing, but I just I just find my ends to be a little bit more reasonable. I find that there's a little bit more that um, sustains it. I feel like it's better for 
societies as a whole. I feel like it's better for men as a whole, for women as a whole, and definitely for children as a whole on many fronts. And I guess we can go <laughs> into the individual caveats and kind of see where that may be <laughs> actually true or not. But I think that on the whole, I'm just selling a better brand and, uh -huh. you know, like, yeah. Yeah, it, it's better. I think it's better in the sense that we're going to still be here. Like, uh, I mean, <laughs> if we get rid of the nuclear family, we're, I mean, the human race is going to go extinct. I mean, eventually. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's just better yeah. for the society as a whole. Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got like the reason why the Christian conservative would not be for a man adopting kids. I was just, just the whole thing. I was just a little like, I was a little bit in the dark. It's, well, I, I like Dave, but I mean, it just kind of like opens up the doorway to like it, like other people. It's like, what I mean, I don't really know him, what he's really like outside of like this show. Mm -hmm. He can be like a completely different person, yeah, uh, as well. And then it's just, I don't like what intentions, why, why, why does he want a kid? I mean, he chose a lifestyle that he has. You would think that if he wanted a kid, he would be with a woman. I mean, I don't want to sound like yeah. so hard. He's also. But, He's also really old. Like he's like forty six years old. By the time that kid's sixteen, he's gonna be on to almost damn near his sixties. I mean, and and my father kind of did a similar thing, so I can't talk too much. But at the same time, like man, don't you shouldn't children be having in, in the prime of a parent's adulthood in order so that they can truly like experience life with them and do that? But what I'll keep this kind of brief. What you said about um, opening the door, uh, it's kind of like, I think I kind of said something about it earlier. We can always watch mm -hmm. the tape back and see. But um, we've opened so many doors and allowed so much stuff to flow through unchallenged that we're now at the point where we're at this. I yeah. think that conservatives realize that it's time to push back and say no more. We have to begin to shut off those uh, gates. And it's going to be take a while to clean up the mess that has come through those floodgates but the important thing is that we shut them off and that we begin to slowly but surely get mm -hmm. the water up out of there fix the homes get everything straight but those floodgates have got to shut up they've got to be barred up and they need to not open up lest we repeat exactly where we were at before mm. uh, all right uh i guess we can go right. into it longer on top of that but... you, you really have to think about mental health yeah yeah yeah, true. Uh, wait. Oh, uh, me? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. I, I, was saying, I, don't even, I don't even know. Okay, I was saying you also have to think about the kid's mental health. So uh, a child will, will always does better, like scientifically always does better when they a father and a mother in the household. There are higher cases of depression for children who have who grow up with same sex parents. Yeah. Um, so you're also like opening you're opening a case of an identity crisis. Like, why am I the only one who has a, a parents who are two dads? Like, yeah. That's going to open a floodgate of mental health issues that we've already got enough of. I was just about and to say, I, we, I like we got our enough I mental health really issues. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, I guess we kind of have to cut it. I'm going a little too long. Uh, maybe we can continue this uh, on another episode, because I do like this, where this is going. You have to start to wind down. Um, I guess if anyone, if you guys want to, like, plug anything that you're putting out there or anything like that before we go. Um, if you enjoy these base takes, uh, then you will love Spalatin uh, Rabbit on BZ Eakin Toys. <laughs> All right, uh, Evine, you want to plug anything you're working on? And sure, oh. um, uh, working on two children's books. Uh, uh, if you want to support them, um, they are on my coffee, which is Evine Arts. Uh, all of it, all lowercase and put together. Uh, one um, is about two lambs search, searching for their shepherd, um, so lots of Christian principles. And another one where we have an angel uh, watching over the men and women who shape America in the way it is. And that is um, known as uh, Chosen the Angel. So if you guys want to help support me, go on, go to my coffee. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll put, I'll put the links to everybody's stuff on this. Uh, 
All right, I guess that makes uh, another episode of the Critical Introverts podcast. I'm your host, uh, Senor Phil, and uh, I guess we'll see you guys another time. All right, see ya. Bye.